the depth, length, breadth, and height of the love of Christ? No, I couldn't find. The love of God cannot just be described. It has to be experienced. For we have experienced the love, and so we worship. Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Ram Devotion Moment. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Something is working in somebody's favor right now. I don't care what you seem to have gone through, God has a wonderful plan for you and his plans for us are good, not evil, plans to bring us to our expected end. Hallelujah. Today, we are going on to chapter number 16 of the Gospel book of John. And we are starting from verse number one. It's been an interesting, awesome journey. Now let's read chapter number 16 from verse number one. Jesus speaking, I have told you all these things, so that you should not be offended, taken unawares, and falter, or be caused to stumble and fall away. I told you to keep you from being scandalized and repelled. Now, what was Jesus talking about here? Remember in chapter 15, he had told the disciples that the world will hate them because they hate him, Jesus Christ, all right? And that his servant is not greater than his master. And if they hated him, they will hate us, the Christians. And if they receive him, they will receive us. And so he was like, don't be surprised. Don't be taken aback. And he said something very important here. He said, so that you should not be offended. You know, a lot of people get into Christianity and somehow, somewhere along the journey, they become offended because they didn't know that it is going to attract some rash, unreasonable reaction and that some people are going to come against them with so many kind of ugly, awful, you know, words and actions. And not one of us want to be in the camp of those who are hated. All right? Now, he said, I'm telling you this so that you don't get offended. You, you are not taking on our words and that you do not falter. See, a lot of people uh, are fall away a lot of people stumble because they were told immediately you become a child of God, everything will be fine. Everything will be smooth. The world will be a wonderful place. But the reality is this. Because, because you are a child of God, some people will hate you. Just the fact that you are a child of God. You see, they hate you because you have a different spirit. You have a holy spirit on your inside. And what they have is not a Holy Spirit. It's a spirit that allows them to do whatever they want. All right? And so when they see somebody who has a spirit that is pure and doesn't allow the person to mess up, they get angry because they are reminded of their sins. So sinners get angry with the saints, Christians, because the Christian remind them of a life that they are unable to live and remind them of their sin. And so they get angry. And some of them who are unbelievers, as we call them, sinners, who have tried by their own ability to live away from certain, you know, ugly attitude and sinful tendencies, sees you as a Christian and they are angry with you. Why? Because they have tried to live the life they couldn't and they just can't 
put up with you and they think that you are pretending or you are a hypocrite. And that's the reason why we must be careful as Christians not to live the life that will cause people to scandalize like Jesus says. The gospel. Verse number two says, they will put you out of, expel you from the synagogue, but an hour is coming when whoever kills you will think and claim that he has offered service to God. And that is happening all over the world today. You see a lot of, you know, people taking the lives of Christians, a lot of religion, religious group get angry with Christians, extremists. They slit the truth of Christians and they think they are offering sacrifices to God. It's so unfortunate. In fact, they thought they are doing this for God. And they will say God is great when they kill and take the life of somebody. That is not God. God loves us and has commanded us to love and not to take the life of somebody. We do not believe in taking the lives of others. We help them to have a beautiful life. And But Jesus is telling us here that the time will come. They are going to chase you out of their place of meeting, out of their city, out of their country. They are going to have so much hatred that they are going to go as far as taking your life. And Jesus said this to his disciples so that it doesn't become a strange thing. The Bible says in Revelation that they love not their life unto the death. That's talking about Christians. See, those who love the Lord love their life. Not, I mean, don't love their life like those who are in the world. See, when you love Jesus, you give him your life. And when you give him your life, you know that he's able to keep that which you have entrusted unto him against that day, like Paul wrote telling Timothy. And you know you have a confidence this confidence rather that gives you boldness that you know you're not just living for this life alone you're living life with confidence that there's a greater life on the other side beloved i don't want you to waste your time on this part of eternity there's a greater and glorious life waiting on the other side there's a life glorious better than this and that's what jesus came to die to prepare us for that we may have eternal life. If you have not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, all of this will sound strange. But when you truly take a look at the words of Christ and actually take a look at life and you're going to realize that the child of God has greater hope right here on this earth and also in eternity. Why don't you make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? And I promise you, your life will not be the same again. When you go through storm, he's going to see you through and he's going to bring you on the other side far much more glorious. Thank you for being part of today's broadcast. It's been a wonderful time sharing God's word with you. Please stay connected to, us, to this teaching and God is going to do something beautiful out of your life. I'm Ego Louis Yegu. God bless you.